We're in the midst of a huge transformation where our peers, communities, and workplaces are all really melding into one. Welcome to Reimagining Company Culture. My name is Christina Giordano, she, her, and hers, and I am the Senior Partnerships Manager here at All Voices. Today, I am very excited to welcome our next guest on the interview series, Andrea Bachu. She is the Chief Culture Officer at UiPath. Andrea, thank you so much for being here. If you wanna share a little bit about yourself, including your pronouns, and when you were younger, do you remember how exactly we answered the question, what do you wanna be when you grow up? Hey, hi, Christina. Super happy to be with you. Thank you for the invite and thank you for your mission to make these voices heard all around the globe. I think uh, what you do here makes a true impact. So appreciate the invite. Happy to be with you. What was I thinking I will be when I grow up? <laughs> it's a very nice question. I, I very readily get it. Um, I wasn't like specifically very much aware of what exactly the job will be like, but I always knew there has to be something with with uh, people and with human and with helping them become a better version of themselves and with motivating them and give them support and and resources that they need for them to achieve whatever mission in life they have. So I've, I've been always since I was very, very, very young, passionate about human beings and human behavior and human evolution. So here you go. I love that. It definitely makes sense from fast forward to today. Uh, you're leading the culture team as well at UiPath. And it's in the name of our, you know, our interview series. What are qualitative and quantitative ways you think about really measuring this dynamic thing of company culture, especially as you continue to add new team members and things are always evolving? Yeah, great question. We do have what we call a listening strategy. And the listening strategy that we have has both qualitative and quantitative measurements. There is a section in that listening strategy that is very common to many organizations around the globe called the engagement survey. I think most of the companies are taking the polls on how their people are feeling and what their sentiment is every moment in time. We do run that too. It's, um, it's the annual engagement survey. But on top of that, we understood that once a year is definitely not good enough. So what we have is another tool, which is called um, Office Vibe, which is a really good partner out there. It's not our own um, technology, but we are partnering with them. And what we do through Office Vibe is to check in on the sentiment in key moments in time, either on a timeline, say it daily, weekly, monthly, or and on a top on a topic per se on a theme per se being that well-being workload understanding business priorities performance development needs so we have the annual engagement survey and we have the office uh, vibe which is pulsing the organization on a timeline or on a theme. This is more quantitative as we are able to see the demographics, who is answering, what exactly do they say, where the challenges are and how we can help them. More qualitative ways, we have two other areas in which we focus on. One has to do with the follow-up after a particular moment in time, being that the engagement survey. Let's say we find out something about a team within the organization that is challenged by a particular situation. So we gather the people in a focus group and we dig deeper, we zoom in, we understand, we listen actively to what exactly the situation there is. And based on that, we act on specific actions that we can do with them and for them. That's one. And the other element we do, we have what we call the feedback channel, which is a channel which stays on our Slack um, environment. And in that feedback channel, anybody, anywhere in the world, they can go in with their name or anonymously and tell us something about something that bothers them or something that makes them very happy. And this feedback channel is um, it's a very controversial tool, that, uh, tool. There are days when I love it because there is somebody out there who is mesmerized and very grateful for the experience they have in the company. And some days I hate it because there is somebody there somewhere who is really upset and feels terrible about a situation. And if that person chooses not to give his or her name, 
then it's very hard for us to help them. But this is um, a very good tool for us because it acts like a, like a scanning mechanism. When things bubble up on the feedback channel, you can tell if there is a real situation which is bigger and it's it's uh, systemic, or if it is a small situation and can be dealt with differently, not systemically. Um, so that's, in a nutshell, I would say, this is how we measure it. Annual engagement survey, office vibe through weekly, monthly, um, or theme-like pulses, plus the focus groups and the feedback channel. Uh, I think that's definitely a listening strategy for sure. It's not just a one and done uh, kind of channel or asking, continuing to ask how people are feeling is really important as well. And kind of an expectation for employees too, to kind of share how they're feeling. I know that for many reasons, job related, life related, a lot of folks feel burned out. 47% of employees reported their stress was higher than anything they've experienced uh, in their career so far. And only 37% agreed that their organization really understood what they needed both in their personal lives and for their families. How is UiPath really supporting the full lives of employees? Yeah, super question. And honestly, Christina, if you would have asked, if you would have asked us the same question two and a half years ago, probably the answer would be different. But with or without our thinking being there, the whole pandemic situation challenged a lot of ways of supporting our people from well-being perspective. So through the pandemic, we understood that we have to double down on mental health. And we've, um, we've uh, offered, obviously, the 800 number, which is super confidential. And there is an organization that is helping us with specifically the mental health that any individual around the globe would, would feel they need uh, without us obviously knowing what is all about, but they have the support in case needed. And then we introduce a couple of um, support mechanisms. For example, early on, we um, had these two apps that were very much used. One is Active and the other one is Headspace. One is really focused on physical well-being and the other one is focused on mental well-being. And we've seen some really nice adoption rates very early on when, when if you remember, we could not even get out of the, of the house. So with Active and Headspace, we met our people needs where they are. And because they had it on their phone, they could obviously receive the help that they needed. And it was very much driven by their own discipline. Now, that wasn't enough because for whatever reason, uh, for some people that worked, for some people that didn't work. And that's fine because it's never a one size fits all, right? It's everybody is finding their solution based on the needs that they have and the way they, they are as human beings. And then the other things that we did was around um, getting together on, on different topics and starting to be a little bit more open and more transparent around the needs of, for example, managers who were put in the position not to only take care of themselves, but to take care of their teams working virtually. Now, some of our managers were very much used with that because they would have a virtual team anyway. Some managers didn't have that. They were very much used with working with people in the office and, and having team meetings in the office and gathering in the office and one-on-one -on -one in the office. So we had to leverage those practices and help our managers that didn't have that experience to learn from the others for them to actually um, do better with their teams. Um, the other things that we've done is we've um, introduced within our leadership development programs things that will have to do more with taking care of yourself and your own people. So, um, you know, self-managing modules that will um, inspire people to do better for themselves so that they can do it. And if they do it, then their people are seeing that they can, can do that too. And also, last but not least, I think it really starts with um, senior leaders who are modeling their own well-being um, methodology, whatever that is. Like, for example, we just um, have uh, Chris Weber who joined us about a month and a half ago. And in his first All Hands, he talked about to all our people about the importance of sleep. 
and how that impacts your your own way of showing up to work every single day. And he actually bought the book and sent it to everybody. Um, and now we are much more educated on how important sleep is. So I don't think it's, again, one size fits all. It's different tools for different audiences with different needs. The importance is that we have to consider it and understand that people are coming to work with their whole self and decoupling work from life is not anymore the way to go. On the contrary, we should include life in the scheme of everything and understand that people for their own sake, first of all, have to take care of themselves for them to actually contribute to work in the best possible way. Absolutely. It's not a one size fits all approach. And then pouring from an empty cup does not help anyone. So sleep is important. Leadership development is important. Investing in those resources for managers. We've all heard that managers can make or break someone's experience because you might not be talking to the chief culture officer every day, but you are kind of engaging with your manager a lot as well. Uh, you mentioned transparency and really transparent communication, which I think is critical as well, modeling by senior leadership. Can you give me an example of how you practice transparency and transparent communication at Yardpath? Transparency. Well, the feedback channel is a great um, example of transparency. When, when you are allowing ourselves when we are allowing ourselves as a management team to be exposed like that on a channel where everybody could post anything. And when we take turns in replying to those posts, even, even if some of them are really heartfelt and you can read in between those lines, people's being upset, um, allowing that channel to exist and encouraging people to have a voice there, it's, it's a great element of transparency. Also, throughout this couple of years, um, we didn't knew how the whole COVID situation will go, right? So we would go out, tell the people we don't know, and then we would come back and say, now we know, and this is what we are going to do. Opening offices, closing offices. Imagine we are um, a little bit more than 4,000 people around the globe truly global organization with one fourth of us being in Romania where the company was funded, another fourth of us in US, another fourth of us equally split between India and Japan, and another fourth of us in 40 different countries. You pick one on the globe and probably we are there with a small but mighty sales team. So when you have a global workforce like that, of course, Every situation is driven by the local legislation of how people decide in a particular country to react to COVID. And we did a new or every single moment in time in every country in the world. But the fact that we were transparent about it and we, we share the fact that we don't have all the answers and we are going to share it with them when we can, I think that went a long way. And even with opening the offices right now, we were very, very very clear on us putting our people's safety first. And we were not the first one to jump the gun and say, we are opening, we are good to go. We just watched out how the trend was going, what the countries were doing, and then slowly but surely when it was safe for our people, we actually opened it. And um, we kept them all the time. And at every step of the way, we were telling them where we are and, and what we plan to do. So it's a very two-way dialogue. It's it's less of a top-down approach. It's more of a, let's talk about it. Here is the issue. This is what we know. This is what we don't know. Let's come back to it when the information becomes available. Yeah, that two-way conversation is really important, coming in with curiosity, being vulnerable, asking for feedback, as you were talking about as well. I think that is a really good example too. And kind of you mentioned that the shift that's happened over the past few years and kind of changing in strategies because we had to, we didn't know what the future looked like. Can you tell me about how you've redesigned a system to be more equitable over the past few years, whether it's a process, policy, or initiative? Um, that's a good one, Christina. So you, your question is around how did we brought innovation to life in this space of um, not knowing, is, is this the question in the VUCA yeah. world, like volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity, how can you innovate to make the space even more inclusive? Is, is yeah. this the question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So around diversity, inclusion and belonging, we really, we have this strategy, we call it Just Be Us, that stands for justice, 
um, belonging and uniqueness. And we really celebrate this um, special uniqueness of all our people. And we are really intentional about creating this culture where everyone feels a sense of belonging. Um, for example, now the month of June is, is the Pride Month, right? So in honor of the Pride Month, member of the Pride at UiPath, because we have that community and we cherish them and, and love them, they will be hosting this Thursday Culture Forum. So every month there is a culture forum that we publish. Um, and with every month we consider it, how do we embrace these communities for them to contribute and give back and educate us so that we get to know each other better. So this month, this monthly forum is going to be on Pride um, at UiPath. And they will talk about LGBTQ, the history, the global presence, the cultural influence, and additionally, Pride, Pride at UiPath is also sponsoring this global giving opportunities through our benefit platform in which anybody can contribute and volunteer with um, money or time to make sure that we uh, pay it forward in the communities we are part of. So these are some ways by which we create this um, culture of, of uh, being inclusive and, and immersing ourselves in the differences that we have, cherishing them and learning from one another how to, how to coexist and contribute to each other's strengths. Absolutely. It's so important to have kind of that holistic programming, make sure people feel seen, heard, and understood, and have that combination of events to honor and celebrate uh, pride and LGBTQ employees 365 days a year. Uh, in your experience, are there any, and of course not at UiPath as well, but are there any common mistakes you see companies in general making in their people talent uh, or company culture strategy still today? Oh, I love this question. Yes, we do some mistakes. Some of them at UiPath. We also do mistakes at UiPath. But for example, this couple of months, it was all about great resignation, great resignation, great resignation. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, we are losing people. So I started to wonder, are we losing people because they want to stop working and they will go for a sabbatical or for a time break or for simply a break from work? Or are, are we losing people because they do not find with us what they will find or think they will find with some other employer? So when you dig deeper into it, first of all, and data will tell, I might be wrong, but data will tell, I don't think it's a great resignation. I genuinely believe it's a great migration because we see people, you know, resigning and finding another role. It's not that they resign and they take a break. So if data, and data will tell, the, the history is still being written as we speak. I hope I'm wrong, but so far there is this migration from an employer to another employer because different reasons, right? Pay, flexibility, work-life balance, understanding the whole being, and so on and so forth. Now, if they are migrating, that means that we haven't done something to keep them here and retain them here. Now, if they are valuable people, and most of them are, bless them, and, and they are doing their very best to contribute to their best capability, why not have this practice of stay interview, right? Why do we do interviews only when we recruit people and we are trying to find out more about them to see if they are a good fit for us? either culturally or of course, job experience lie. Why not to do stay interview? Well, let's talk with each other before you make the decision to leave. Let's have the stay interviews once in a while. They don't have to be more often than every six months, let's say, by which we connect and we have a genuine, adult, honest, radical candle conversation around so, Christina, what are you doing here? Are you happy with what you do? Do you have meaning in the work that you do? How about the ecosystem? Do you have the resources you need for you to do a good job? Are you happy with the work that you do? And then if we have this very honest and transparent dialogue around you staying with us, then the decision for you to leave might be at least postponed if not canceled altogether. Because if I, as an employer, take the time to listen to why you stay or why you would think to move and I'm committed to change that, 
and make sure that I can provide you as an employer the opportunity for you to actually stay, you will not decide to leave. So that, for example, for me, it's an important area where we could do be better. And, and mistakes, maybe it's a mistake. I don't, I don't think it's like, I don't think it's intentional. It's just that we realize after the loss that we could do something better. And, and we could do better from the get-go. We can really do better from the get-go. I like that answer because I feel like I'm hearing a lot more about stay interviews. Someone the other day was talking about how he kind of re-interviews himself to see, am I still doing a good job in this role? Am I still happy in this role? Um, do I feel like I'm growing and kind of asking that questions and having that radically candid conversation with your team members is really important to get ahead of things as well. Um, and again, open that dialogue, build trust and and have that uh, discussion. Is there anything in terms of, we've seen a lot of people innovate uh, with stay interviews, with uh, four-day work week, with mental health benefits, you mentioned heads, uh, Headspace as well. Um, is there anything that you are most excited about and why this could be anything uh, in people talent culture? People talent culture, we do have an automation that I'm really passionate about. And it, it has the potential to really be used in many, many areas in this people and talent space. We call it Athena. And Athena is our, um, it, the name came from the Greek goddess that was um, the wisdom, the goddess of wisdom. This is how we name her. And what Athena does, she is matching the mentors and the mentees on a particular need. So in this mentoring space, we realize more often than not that to accelerate learning, to make sure you don't discover the, the shortcuts painfully, but somebody is telling you what could go wrong if you choose this path or not. We realize that mentoring has a substantial, significantly more accelerated return on investment if you do it right from the get-go. And, and we are using Athena to do this matching between mentors and mentees on specific topics. So let's say I know about you being a great facilitator of interviews. Maybe I don't know that, but I need that in my job. So Athena will be able to find you because you put your um, strengths somewhere in our profile and Athena will know that I have this need. And she will match the two of us. We will come together and we will start the mentoring process. This is a very small automation that can be done. It has a little bit of chatbot functionality in there. Um, and with that, this can go places because it's a matching mechanism, right? Same way as Uber went places, same way as where Airbnb went places. When you match the need with the solution, magic would happen. So an automation like that can really, really, really bring a lot of value in the talent space, in the people space, and in general, whenever you want to put a need with a solution together. I'm really excited about it. We launched it, I believe, about 18 months ago. We've had the first release. We got some feedback. Now it's Athena 2.0. We are upgrading the functionality, and I'm so looking forward to see what Athena will, will bring to our people in the space of their own development in the next couple of months. That is exciting. Athena, thank you for sharing that and kind of the use cases behind it as well. It sounds like there'll be a really impactful automation moving forward as well. Andrea, is there anything that I didn't ask you that you want to share with folks who are listening or maybe underscoring a couple of key takeaways from uh, kind of the different topics we, we discussed today? Um, so I think I would... My my advice would be to just, um, I don't know, f focus on the things that they can control and be less worried of the things that they cannot control. Um, I see a lot of um, anxiety, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of, oh my God, what will happen if this will happen? And the world we live in, unfortunately, has a lot of bad news in the scope, in media, on TV, in social media, wherever you go, there is an invasion happening. Obviously, we are talking about Ukraine and Russia, right? There is inflation in countries that haven't seen inflation for years. There is a whole COVID situation. So there is so much bad news 
um, flooding our minds with our with or without our own um, desire to actually allow it to influence our life that um, why not to focus on the things that we can focus and con can control find a way to enjoy the experiences you are in charge of and the experience that are brought to you by the mystery of life and stay in control of the things that you can control let others focus on the things that they cannot and I truly hope that by doing so and focusing on the things that they can uh, control, they will have a meaningful life. They'll be happy about what's happening in their life and they will be able to share that positivity and happiness around with the people that are very dear to their heart. I think that is a great uh, call to action to end on. Remember what is in your control, what is not in your control and uh, enjoying the mystery of life. I love that. Uh, Andrea, thank you so much for being on Reimagining Company Culture this afternoon. You are very welcome. Happy to be with you. Of course. And as a reminder for uh, folks who are listening at All Voices, we really believe uh, in employees and employers being seen, heard, and understood. and know it's a requirement for the company to really succeed overall. Have a great rest of your day, everyone.